What's going on everyone? My name is Blake Rafino and this is Are You Serious? I hope you're making it a good one. I hope you're having a good day. And today we have a good show in store for you guys. Got a lot of good topics. Got a lot of stuff we're going to dive into. I did talk with someone inside the LSU program about the HBO doc series that's coming up. We're going to talk about that. First topic we're going to talk about is today, if you saw on the poll on Twitter, I posted who was the best head coach at LSU over the last 20 years. We're going to talk that, touch that topic as well. Something that we talked about yesterday, breaking news, about an hour, hour and a half, two hours after I posted the video on YouTube and Facebook, the NCAA came back with a verdict on the eligibility, so we will talk about that as well. But before we get into all of that, you guys, you know you know me. If you've been following me, you can follow me on Twitter at AYS Sports, on Facebook and Instagram at RU Series Sports, along with YouTube as well. So guys, like I mentioned, we got a lot to go into. And one of the polls that I've been doing, we talked about this yesterday, but one that I've been really looking forward to and one that I thought would get a lot of traction and it has is who has been the best LSU coach, head coach, over the last 20 years. Out of the four people that we put was Nick Saban, Ed Orgeron, Paul Maneri, and Les Miles. And when I posted I thought, see, I, when I post these, I always think that there's going to be, it's going to be someone different who's going to take the lead. I thought that Saban would get the edge. I thought people would be a little bit more realistic on that venture and would pick Saban, but Edo is in the lead. And I think there's a lot of recency, recency bias in that. But we're going to break them down one by one and my thoughts on those four. Look, Nick Saban came to LSU and he, he woke up to sleeping giant, if you will, at LSU. But I, I feel like there were times when Saban was here that he lost some games that he was not supposed to. He, did, he has not done that at Alabama. Now, there are some people and some critics that will say that Nick Saban used LSU as a stepping stone, but so did LSU. LSU used and needed Nick Saban just as much. And remember, Nick Saban was at Michigan State before he came to LSU. He had been in coaching for a long time. He was under Bill Belichick. So he was known around a lot of circles. But he did awake that sleeping giant. He did have some pieces when he came in. We're, let's not forget, Jerry DiNardo had some really good recruiting classes. Booger McFarlane, Cecil Collins, Kevin Falk. All those guys did come to LSU. But what Nick Saban did was he, he locked the state down. He locked Louisiana down when it came to recruiting. Won a national championship in 2003, something that had not been done since 1958. So to say that Nick Saban didn't, start this, that he wasn't the springboard that started the consistency and the dominance that LSU has had over the last 20 years. It's completely idiotic, if you will. Nick Saban did a lot for LSU. Now, it sucks, and we all know that he the story, him going to Miami, him going to Alabama, and him saying he'd never do that. But there were times where Nick Saban, you know, after the national championship game going or season, going eight and four, losing to Iowa, leaving, going to Miami, Things like that that I think that then going to Bama have a lot of sour tastes in people's mouths. Number two is Les Miles. Look, when it comes to Les, you have someone who is the winningest coach in LSU football when it comes to winning percentage and has the most wins. I think where people did not and will not vote for Les and have this, I, how do I say this, have this feeling of less, have this hurt feeling of it, is that he had so much talent that he could not do a lot with, especially on the offensive side. When it came to defense, Les recruited his ass off. He look at, Think of all the guys that he brought in, especially in that 2011 team, how much talent they had on defense with that squad. You had Brandon Taylor, you had Tyron Matthew, you had Claiborne, you had Reed, and that's just – in the defensive backfield, right? That's just in the defensive backfield. Sam Montgomery, Arden Key, all those guys were on the defensive side of the football. A lot of people were on the offensive side as well. Reuben Randall, you had a really good offensive lineman. Will Blackwell was one of those, I think an All-American who was on the offensive line. 
So he did do a lot of things good when it came to recruiting, but could never get that one guy, the quarterback. Now, Mettenberger was there a little bit, but didn't have the guy, Jordan Jefferson, and things like that. Never Brandon Harris. Never was able to bring that stud quarterback in to run his offense and never adapted. So less getting fired, less moving on. He's not going to get a lot of traction when it comes to the best LSU coach of all time. You know, I'm going to say this and brings to the guy who's leading the poll is Ed Orgeron. Doesn't it feel like Ed has done everything that Les wouldn't, right? Like he did everything that Les refused to do. He brought in a spread offense. He brought in younger coaches to run that spread offense, the RPO offense. When it comes to the defense side of the football, he allowed his coaches to coach. And I think Les did that as well. Ed will put his two cents in, but he's more of the CEO of what Les should have been. And everything that Les refused to do and even told fans that he would do, he didn't. And now Ed Orgeron is accomplishing that while at LSU. I do think that there is some recency bias when it comes to Ed, okay? I think that coming off a national championship, people are gonna vote for Ed because of what he's done. But I'm gonna say this and why I don't believe it's all recency bias, why everyone is voting for Ed Orgeron now because of the national title. Look, the last eight years before this season, you were in kind of this purgatory state where you were getting beat by Bama, you weren't winning the SEC West, you weren't really even competitive when it came to the point of, the, at least on the offensive side, you had some real studs on the defensive side of the football, and you did have some studs on the offense, but you never was able to get that quarterback. I just mentioned it. What was Les Miles' biggest bugaboo? He was unable to get that quarterback. So Les bringing in Joe Burrow, and I know that he was on off the bench with t Bob and Jordy Collada this morning and talked about that, really pushed and really recruited hard for Joe Burrow. And everyone knows his story. Probably the best, no, not probably, but the best offense that college football has ever seen. And not only that, possibly the best team in college football that anyone has ever seen. So where I think it's a little premature to say that Ed has been the best LSU coach over the last 20 years right now, if he continues to do what he's doing at LSU, he could be the best coach of LSU of all time. And you have Skip Berkman that's in there. He could push that because LSU baseball then and what LSU football could do now, it's going to be completely different. If, if, if Ed Orgeron is able to win two, three, four, maybe even five national titles, he will definitely be in that class of greatest coaches, not just at LSU, but of all time. Uh-oh, there goes my mic. Sorry, guys. Sorry for people who are listening on SoundCloud. My mic just fell. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But getting back to it, Paul Maneri was the last one. Look, I think Paul's a little in the less train. I think that he re has refused to adapt, okay, when it comes to some things. But look, Paul's won a lot of baseball games at LSU. He's done some really good things. But when it comes to some LSU fans and when it comes to what's going on on the field, Paul has had some times where his teams have struggled and it, can, it, it, it tends to be the same struggles year after year at the plate, in the field, playing a guy like Hal Hughes at short at times when he couldn't hit a beach ball if it was thrown at him at times. So not going to spend a lot of time on Paul, but I think we all are going to agree, okay, that Paul is in that less feel that he just hasn't adapted at times. He, he It's his way or the highway. Like, for an example, players not being able to have facial hair. What I mean, like, that kind of stuff, that feels less mileish, doesn't it? Kind of feels like, hey, it's my way, old school, my way or the highway. So that's just my thoughts. But I, if I had to pick, and to end this topic right here, but if I had to pick who is out of those four the best, I think I'm going to say Nick as of right now. And I, I hate saying that, but I think it's just the truth. When you come down to it, the sleeping giant that Nick Saban woke up and locking down the state started everything from LSU football from 2000 and what Ed Orgeron just did. If Nick Saban doesn't do what he did when he came in 2000, do you think that Ed Orgeron would be here and be able to do what he's doing now for LSU? I don't think that that would have happened. There were a lot of people that needed credit for Nick Saban being here 
Nick Saban is included in that, obviously. But I, I think if I had to choose right now, I would probably pick Nick Saban. I'm not saying he's my favorite. He's definitely not my favorite. Edo is definitely my favorite out of those four. But just saying what he did and what he was able to accomplish and put Ellis and what he was able to do for LSU is where I'm going to lean. All right, guys, I've talked about this a lot, okay, over the last two, three weeks about Will Wade and about this HBO college basketball doc series that's dropping tonight on HBO at 7 o'clock. What I've said and what I continue to say is going to remain the same. I am going to back Will Wade when it, whatever comes out in this HBO documentary series, unless it starts really harming LSU, okay? I, I've said this and will continue to say this. When it comes to a head coach versus Louisiana State University, I am always going to pick LSU. No coach is going to stop that. My loyalty is to LSU, not to any coach. But with that being said, I'm going to talk about this and why I'm going to defend Will Wade, even regardless of what this doc series is going to show. Now, there are some things that it can show that could change my mind, but, okay, but it's going to, have to show me something that's very concrete, not just the audio, okay? Like I mentioned earlier in the show, I got a text this morning and was sending texts back with someone inside of LSU. And I'm going to read that text off to you, Brandon. I know we talked about that. And so I'm just going to read off the text that I was sent about the doc series that's dropping tonight. Okay, here is the text. We have seen parts of the documentary, and in my opinion, it looks worse for Will than any other coach in college basketball. I may be biased because obviously I'm here, meaning LSU, but reading a, transcript, reading a transcript and hearing the audio is completely different to me. I think it's very damning for Will, talking about Will Wade. And it's going to be interesting to see what Scott, A.D. Scott, what would Will do as this continues to be released. If you ask me, I think that there's going to be something that's going to drop against Will Wade that's going to make people in the LSU administration building do some things that may be unforeseen. So that's a text that I got this morning from someone at LSU. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm not even confirming or believing fully in that text, but I am just telling you, and you guys know me well enough to know, when I get something like this, I'm going to share it with you. But that's something. If they have seen some of the HBO doc series, okay, if they have seen some of this, there's going to be something in there that's probably unforeseen and something that people are not ready or have not been told of. OK, so we know that there is a little audio that we had not heard before that's going to be in this documentary series. However, my 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 part in all of this is I can hear and I can listen to everything that's going to be said on the audio. The audio is one thing. But I'm like Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Where is the money being transferred to these athletes, not just active LSU basketball players, but LSU players who are, are former LSU players? Where is the money? I have never, or I have not been told or seen the FBI or anyone say that they have concrete proof of money being transferred from Will Wade, LSU, or Christian Dawkins, who this is going to revolve around, going to a player. Now, this documentary series can show that, and it might show that, but just giving me an audio, like guys like Pat Forty and, and Dan Wolken and all these, oh, well, we got damning information because we have an audio. You don't have shit. You don't have anything against Will Wade if it's just the audio. You have to have transcripts. You have to have money trail. You have to have money going to these athletes before you can say that there's any concrete proof that Will Wade really did anything. Because I could sit here and say anything. I could be a talking head. Anything could come out of my mouth. But until you have proof that Will Wade did anything, you have nothing. So to sit here and say that this is going to be extremely damning for Will Wade is unbelievable to me. It's really unbelievable to me. Because... What what do we have that would be concrete that the NCAA would be able to come back and enforce? Are they going to enforce what he said over a wiretap? 
or were they in, or can they only enforce money being transferred? They can only enforce money being transferred. Now, let's be all realistic here. Do I think that there was probably some money transferred at somewhere and someone got some money? We would all be foolish if we would sit here and think that someone did not get money, okay? When there's smoke, there is usually some fire, right? But you're, like I said, I'm like Jerry Maguire. You got to show me the money or Rod Tidwell. You got to show me the money before I'm going to completely abandon ship on this Will Wade train. Now, something that I do want to bring up, okay? There were a lot of things when Will Wade was hired and Joe Oliva talked about this and believe him or not, like him or not, Joe Oliva did talk about this when he was going on a, a basketball head coaching search there were some people that did tell him that Will Wake does have some baggage that comes along with him. Is this the baggage that they were talking about? That's something that we will see in this doc series. Now, again, like I've mentioned, and we're going to all watch it tonight, and we're all going to form our opinion, but what I will ask from all LSU fans, let's take this off. Let's take these blinders off, the LSU blinders around Will Wade, and listen and watch what is actually going on in this documentary series? What are they actually saying? What are they actually proving? Now, they can spin it in a way that makes it look very, very bad for Will Wade and better for Christian Dawkins. We don't know that yet. I anticipate that's something that they will do. But to sit here and say that we have to take that as gospel would be false. But we need to take the LSU blinders off when we look at Will Wade and look at the facts and make sure that they line up. So I know I kind of went on a rant. I know I kind of went on a spill there, but I've been talking about this for three weeks, guys. I've been talking about this for three weeks about Will Wade, what's going to happen. And now all of a sudden people are getting, are kind of on their tippy toes asking the questions of what's going to happen. I told you what's going to happen. This doc series is going to, is going to drop. There's going to be some things on Will Wade. Other schools in the SEC and around the nation are going to say Will Wade needs to be fired and it's going to have LSU under a microscope. Period. It is. You're going to have big journalists that are going to come after Will Wade. If you think that that's not going to happen, you're dumb and you're foolish and you need to take those blinders off that we just talked about. There's no other way around it. So until that money drops, until I have a money trail, I'm not going to abandon ship. But like I said, that it, it airs tonight at 7 o'clock on HBO. I'm going to be tuned the hell in. I mean, who wouldn't be tuned in? That's something that's that can impact LSU moving forward. Not just, I mean, not just next season, but for God knows how long. Okay, guys, we talked about this yesterday, and and pretty much what we had talked about came to pass. The NCAA did pass the eligibility for seniors. They did, in my recommendation, move that scholarship limit up to 35, okay, and something that I foresaw that they would probably do. But like I mentioned on the tweet from yesterday morning, this does not bode well for all seniors and all programs, okay? They are giving schools the option of this scholarship and how, how who gets paid, how much they get paid for these seniors who would come back. That is going to benefit bigger power five schools like we mentioned, or like I mentioned yesterday. It is not going to do jack shit for anyone at Southeastern, for Nichols, for any of these smaller schools. Don't If you don't want to take my word for it, listen to what Scott Woodward said yesterday, the LSU AD. This is going to be very expensive, but I think it's the right thing for the seniors coming back for spring athletics. If someone at LSU, if the athletic director at LSU is saying that, how do you think that people at Southeastern feel or Nichols feel or any other smaller school feel? And what are they going to do when it comes to money? That is something that we're going to have to follow. All of this when it comes to what's going to happen next season for baseball and softball is not – all those details aren't worked out yet. So we're going to have to go along as they work out. But like I mentioned yesterday and like I asked the NCAA to do, and I, I know they're not doing this for Blake Rafino, come out with a sweet short statement saying we're going to allow seniors to come back and we're going to work out the details as they unfold. And that's exactly what they should have done. It's exactly what they should have done. So kudos to you. But like I mentioned, as we monitored this, 
as we can as this continues to come out and go on, I know uh, was it Kendall Rogers has is, is following it pretty closely. It's not going to affect the SEC power schools. It's not going to. It's not going to affect the Big Ten. It's not going to affect the ACC. It's not going to affect the Big Twelve. It's going to affect everyone outside the Power Five. And something to keep your eye on. What about these grad transfers? So, for example, if a senior's at Southeastern Louisiana, and I know I keep bringing up Southeastern, but I'm right here in Hammond. If a if a grad transfer from Southeastern Louisiana wants to come back, and Matt Riser, the head baseball coach at Southeastern, says, "Look, we we have some incoming freshmen. We don't have." We're, we're not going to be able to, to help you. We don't, we're not going to be able to let you come back. Does a team like LSU go and get that grad transfer? They can. And that would be the rich getting richer for baseball. That would be the rich getting richer for softball. So it's something to monitor as this continues to go on. All right, guys, to wrap it up, look, I, I did mention it in the opening, but the Are You Serious moment of the day, talking a lot about the NCAA Mark Emmert of the NCAA and a lot of the NCAA execs are going to be taking a, a, a smaller salary, a 20% cut in their salary since the COVID-19 epidemic has popped. Look, I think Mark Emmert made $2.1 million last year and to take 20% less. I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, well, he's a millionaire. He should take less. Regardless, regardless, you go into something with a salary. That's what people tell you that you're going to get paid. Okay, to take less in all this, I, kudos to him. I, I applaud him for doing that. So good for Mark Emmert and those NCAA execs. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I'm really looking forward to the Will Wade, HBO, Christian Dawkins series popping tonight at 7 o'clock. And I'm sure we'll be talking on social media. I know we'll be talking on Twitter about that. But it's something that we're all going to be watching. But tune in. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the podcast tomorrow, but tune in. We'll see you guys again soon. Have a good day. My name is Blake Rafino, and this is Are You Serious?